I'm a big fan of your work as an artist, but also, more recently, I've become, and I'm sure many of you have as well, a big fan of your work on TV as well. Yeah, I kind of wandered into it, which is kind of interesting, in my, in my kind of 50s. Yeah. Were you surprised at how well it's gone, at how, uh, how people have embraced that side of you? I mean, we, we try to make a quality product, you know. <laughs> I mean, I would say my basic thing is, you know, I try to kind of put over some actually quite difficult ideas quite often. Yeah. But in a kind of accessible way, because, you know, when, when you kind of uh, work in the art world, it's very academic sometimes. And I want to say to people that anybody can enjoy art, but often I think that it can be quite patronising. And so I try to put over difficult ideas like identity and class and gender and all these sorts of things but in a kind of way that, you know, your average person sitting on a sofa can have a bit of a laugh yeah. about. I love it when somebody who I don't expect gives me, you know, a, a recognition. Like I'm cycling along on my bicycle in a dress one evening, you know, and this sort of cabbie pulls alongside me as I'm going along and he goes, love the tapestries, Grayson! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, goes, Great, you know, I've got reach! Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and was there a moment when, when there are people who you might not have thought would know your work, recognise you? Was that a moment where you thought, OK, I've, I've gone to a different level? Yeah, I was on my bicycle once and I stopped at, like, temporary traffic lights and the guy sort of popped out of the hole in the road and said, shouldn't you be in a dress? <laughs> <laughs> he was disappointed. <laughs> yeah. Cos I thought, the... I've got a nice, accessible, wide audience. It's good. What do you get, Matt, when people recognise you? What do they shout out to you? Well, I get, are you bothered? Are you bothered? <laughs> <laughs> this wasn't even me. <laughs> <laughs> um, we'll speak about the clothes, cos you mentioned that you've... There, there was a while when, when you were wearing clothes like this, you were called Claire. You, had yeah, them, so yeah. that, but you don't really do that so much anymore, do you? No, it was something when I joined a transvestite organisation when I was at college. Um, you know, they ex because then, in those days, it was all much more dodgy, you know, like you, 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 it was something that you didn't want necessarily to advertise. And so people liked anonymity. And yeah. so everybody had a femme name so that they were anonymous within the group. And so my girlfriend sort of looked at me and went, oh, you're a Claire. You know, and that was just, uh, that was just completely so arbitrary. Yeah, yeah, it just stuck. And so I'd just say to whoever my girlfriend was, I'd say, oh, I've got to be Claire tonight, or being Claire tonight. Was there, was there something about those days when it was more clandestine and it was, you know, I mean, it's hardly completely out and accepted now, but certainly is much more so. Do you miss part of that? Was there something about it being sort of secretive and being different? I quite liked being the weird anonymous pervert on the street. <laughs> <laughs> you know, now, if I, if I go out, you know, like, oh, it's Grayson Perry! Yeah, yeah. You know, now I'm not, I'm, not the, I'm not the anonymous weirdo and yeah. I quite, sometimes that sort of danger. I, yeah. You know, the adrenaline of it, because adrenaline is this amazing kind of aphrodisiac. Yeah. I quite enjoyed that.